The largest natural lake west of the Mississippi is shrinking past its lowest levels in recorded history, raising fears about toxic dust, ecological collapse and economic consequences. But the Great Salt Lake may have some new allies, conservative Republican lawmakers. The new burst of energy from the GOP-dominated state government comes after lake levels recently hit a low point during a regional megadrought worsened by climate change. Water has been diverted away from the lake for years, though, to supply homes and crops in Utah. The nation's fastest-growing state is also one of the driest, with some of the highest domestic water use. This year could see big investment in the lake that's long been an afterthought, with Governor Spencer Cox proposing spending $46 million and the powerful House Speaker throwing his weight behind the issue. But some worry that the ideas advancing so far at the state legislature don't go far enough to halt the slow-motion ecological disaster. One proposal would tackle water use in homes and businesses, by measuring outdoor water that's considered some of the country's cheapest. Another would pay farmers for sharing their water downstream, and a third would direct money from mineral extraction royalties to benefit the lake. I long took for granted the lake. It's always been there, and I've assumed it always would be there, said House Speaker Brad Wilson at a summit he convened on the issue. But learning about the lake's precarious position this summer left him terrified. The Great Salt Lake is in trouble. We have to do something. The shrinking of the lake poses serious risks to millions of migrating birds and a lake-based economy that's worth an estimated $1.3 billion in mineral extraction, brine shrimp and recreation. Health risks exist too, the massive dry lake bed could send arsenic-laced dust into the air that millions breathe. But last year the lake matched a 170-year record low and kept dropping, hitting a new low of 4,190.2 feet in October. A significant portion of the microbialites were exposed to air, killing the vital microbes. The die-off will likely take years and years to repair even if they are fully submerged again, said Michael Vandenberg, a state geologist. And if the water levels continue to drop, the lake could get too salty for the edible microbes to survive, something that's already happened in the bright pink waters of the lake's north arm.